Hey, what's up? It's been a while, a whole week. A whole week since my last show. So long. Sorry I wasn't on here Tuesday, but uh, here we are. Here we are. I know the latest topic in Bitcoin Cash has been uh, basically everything about the infrastructure, infrastructure uh, funding protocol, but uh, we're not really going to talk about that today. I, I think most of the debate's kind of been been done and done. Um, I'm sure I will get back around to it at some point, uh, but we still have, what is what is today's date? It is, uh, it's it's February. We still have March, May, wait, <laughs> March, April, May. So we got like two, three months. Cause March 15th, April 15th, May 15th. What's up, uh, Inyanyu? Inyanyu? Uh, so we still have three months and uh man the shit slinging is getting real it is getting absolutely real out here uh bu and abc are throwing punches back and forth uh it's uh it's it'll be quite the it'll be quite the fireworks we'll see if anybody can actually come up with an, a different uh, mining client besides abc because that's really i mean i think bu can mine but uh nobody really does it right now because you know uh they just don't want to be they basically miners don't want to run different software because there's a chance that there's like an incompatible incompatible um feature that like their block is orphaned for some unknown reason so everybody just kind of goes with uh, one um mining implementation right now that's abc on bitcoin cash oh did you notice i have my chair back uh, i actually just moved into a new apartment so woohoo i finally get a chair back and i have really fast internet so oh it looks like i already dropped some frames but uh anyways we'll get into it a little bit uh Welcome, 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 uh, it'll be more of a variety show today, but let, 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 let's hang out, so, uh, this is, a oh, snap, I need to adjust my window real quick, uh, the Dutch police hunt for a male bomber who demanded Bitcoin payoff, uh, there's not really much news to this besides, <laughs> besides he demanded Bitcoin, I mean, he, like, sent some mail bombs, but nobody was even injured, and with the notes were, like, demands for more Bitcoin, otherwise they would continue, and so, uh, they still haven't found him yet, but he is demanding Bitcoin, so uh, that's money right there for you, right? <laughs> uh, Coinbase is now doing margin, or they, they just introduced it. Uh, it's not implemented yet. Available line of credit. Uh, like, I just applied for it. I use Coinbase Pro. And um, basically, they say you need to, like, actively trade. I have been on Coinbase for a while, and then they're, like, rolling out slowly. I, like, applied for it. You can only do up to three times leverage, so... I, I won't get super wrecked like I have before on Max, uh, which <laughs> actually, now that I say that, uh, let me, I don't know, it's somewhere, but uh, BitMEX, the XRP pair on BitMEX, like flash crashed, flash crashed today, and it went from like 0.03 or whatever, the ratio is like 0.01, and like went to like a third, <laughs> and so many people just got absolutely wrecked, and stop losses didn't trigger, and people's accounts got liquidated, so uh, margin trading. But yeah, on Coinbase, it'll only be three times. It doesn't say what pairs yet. So, uh, may, remain to be seen. I'm sure BTC and, like, USDT will be on there. Or USDC, I'm not really sure. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Coinbase is joining the margin game because all the, all, the, all the traders love to margin on the most volatile... Volatile? Volatile... Wow, I cannot talk today. V volatile <laughs> asset there has ever been. So, uh... Yeah, stay safe out there, kids. Stay safe out there, kids. Uh, BitPay just enabled Bitcoin cash payments at 10,000 point of sales devices. And this is with point is the, the point of sale uh, that, that is used here. And it's really nifty. Uh, I don't know if this... Yeah. You can see it on the other... Oh, wait. This, come on. This side. This picture doesn't have the cool part of the, the tablet thing. The cool part of the tablet thing. So, uh, it's really cool because, look it, there's a back side to it. So, you don't have to, like, turn it around. I've seen a couple point of sales where it's, like, the, the mount is integrated and you, like, turn it on, on the base. And so, it's, like, facing the, facing the merchant and then, and they, like, oh, sign. And then they, like, flip it around. With this, you don't need to. The QR code can pop up right there. Uh, it, it said uh, BTC, BCH, Ethereum, but no XRP. Like, ripples on BitPay now, if you didn't know that, which is super funny, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so that's, that's cool. I don't know, like, if you have to, like, enable it or it'll already be enabled because, I mean, if, like, people, like, are people, are people going to people advertise that they're now accepting Bitcoin? Because, like, 100,000 merchants is a shit ton. Like, uh, that Marco Coino app that 
I think Bitcoin.com does uh, has nowhere near that. Maybe like a thousand or something. But like, if you get hundred thousand, I would love to see a map of all the of all these merchants because I've never seen this device before. So, so um, I don't know if any merchants that I go to actually would start accepting it now, which would honestly be really cool. I mean, this is like a huge leap for uh, using Bitcoin crypto in real life. So, very cool, very cool. Uh, Pomp got suspended today for like two hours. So that was uh, everybody was like shit posting about it. Basically, what Pomp does, he uh. He has a bot that like follows and automatically unfollows people, and you see, uh, Pomp does this, and Dan Held Heddle does this too, and it, it's very, I don't know, it's like why? I mean, I know why to get more followers like cheaply, right? It's like a follow unfollow bot, but uh, yeah, he <laughs> he's got a bigger bot army, so like any comment is immediately liked. He's got a whole array of army of Twitter bots. And uh, even if half these RTs are real, I'm embarrassed for the crypto space. And uh, which tweet was he talking about? Or did he delete it? Grocery store Kroger is stopping acceptance of Visa because of network fees. Which is just like, oh yeah, this is <laughs> the Morgan Creek digital team will fly to meet them and get and hook them up with the Lightning Network nationwide. I, I really doubt this is true. Like, 250 stores Kroger will stop accepting Visa. That's so not true. Um, but uh, yeah. So, uh, but he's back. So the, the point is Pomp got suspended for like two hours and uh, then he all of a sudden was back and that this dev this never happens. Like I, on Twitter, I mean, all the, with the whole gym friend saga, Carbon Based is, is still suspended after what, like two months? It's just, it's just silly. And then Pomp, I mean, he's got 300,000 followers. He's one of the most famous people in, in Bitcoin and he obviously toes the, the Bitcoin maximalist party line. Uh, he is the the pumper, the pomper, whatever you want to call him. He he just posts. He's the virus is spreading guy, right? And uh, I'm sure he had a pretty direct line to Twitter, and uh, so he got his account back. So good job. And so <laughs> he this is what he thinks happened though. He asked presidential candidate Mike Bloomberg if he wanted to learn about Bitcoin. Told him to sign up for the newsletter. My guess is political bots mass reported me. Not really censorship, just abuse of Twitter. Also suspension, which. Eh. It's probably because you're using bots, but uh, maybe not. I don't know. Nobody knows, but uh, favoritism is is very rampant here. And his uh, blue check mark went away, so. Oh no. Oh no, not your blue check mark. And some other funny shit that happened today. <laughs> Iota is currently working with law enforcement and cybersecurity ex experts to investigate a coordinated attack resulting in stolen funds. To protect users, we have paused the coordinator and advise users to open Trin not to open Trinity until further notice. So Trinity is our app, and I'm assuming I don't know too much about it. I know it's it's like the Lattice one, right? Some they call it the Lattice network or something. Uh, but they paused the coordinator, which is apparently like their consensus mechanism. And if you go to the IOTA status page, it literally says their mainnet is just like not operational, <laughs> so they can literally just like shut down IOTA whenever they want. So. Uh, that's totally not centralized, guys. Good job. That's a coin in the top 20 in crypto on coin market cap. So, yeah, we're all... Yeah. It's legit, guys. Cryptocurrency is legit, I swear. <laughs> it's legit, guys. Uh, Kraken is... is trying to sue uh, current and former employees because uh, I was trying to find some of the... I saw them earlier and I was trying to refine them for the show and I, I couldn't find them. I forgot where they were from. But basically, some employees that got fired or left uh, left some not very uh, positive reviews about Kraken on like Glassdoor. And one of them was like favoritism. One of them was like they didn't think they were valid. Uh, it's just bad corporate, I guess. I mean, I'm not saying this is, but this is what the employees were saying. And uh, they filed a motion against. So, oh, sorry, sorry. Let me. So, they didn't... I, I got to mix up. The former employees are trying to sue Kraken for harassing and silencing these people that are that are speaking out because they basically would sign like a non-disclosure non -disclosure, and then they go against it. They they start speaking bad about Kraken. So, uh, this, is, this is new as of what is today? It's yesterday. So, good luck, guys. <laughs> A lot of shit happens in crypto, man. This is kind of ridiculous. So let's go to the main story, shall we? So, uh, Bath Township man ran service that laundered 30, 300 
and $11 billion in Bitcoin for darknet transactions. So this was like the original article that kind of said this. And so uh, we, we actually have the article here. So this is against Larry Dean Herman, the United States of America. And it is for... It is for conspiracy to launder monetary instruments, so money laundering, operating an unlicensed money transmitting business, and money transmission without a license. So this is what they're getting him on, 311 million, and uh, <laughs> uh, let's just look at this guy's site. So he, he ran a coin mixing site called uh, Helix. Oh man, my, my, is that kind of distracting? My camera? Is my camera kind of distracting right now? Let me let me fix that for let me fix that a bit here. So similarity. Is that better? Ooh. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So uh <laughs> so <laughs> I mean the title of this episode is Don't Use Laundry Terms to Advertise Your Coin Mixing Service. Cause like money laundering, like, oh let's clean these coins, right? And so literally this is this is his mixing service. You can put up to five addresses that your BTC is going to go to. And uh, and then it's... He says, send your dirty coins to the Helix address. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. Send your dirty coins to the Helix address. New clean coins sent to your Bitcoin address. So, I mean, you literally advertise that. Like, send dirty coins here. And uh, what does dirty mean? Well, basically from darknet services. And... Basically, what this guy did, uh, Larry, he where is this? He actually partnered with um, Alpha Bay. So he actually, so this is Helix Lite is an extension of the darknet search engine called Grams. And so this is, this is literally just like Grams right here. No, I'm just kidding. This is the same website. Uh, but yeah, it was. A, it I think it got shut down or something. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore. It closed in 2017. It was a search engine for darknet markets, and uh, then Helix was launched off of it. And uh, it's, a, it's a coin mixer. And so what Larry did, he partnered with darknet sites such as Alpha Bay. And um, <laughs> he, uh, he two services, the two services, Grams and Helix, were tied together, referred to collectively as Grams Helix. And it enabled customers for a fee to send Bitcoins. Yeah, we know what no mixing is. And so I'm guessing in the in the beginning it used a, a Tumblr, which is just like a centralized way. And I'm sure they just like send transactions around. Uh, but then I think they like upgraded to CoinJoin a little while later. And um, but now here's the funny part: from at least in or around November 2016, Helix partnered with the Darknet Market Alpha Bay to provide money laundering services. Alpha Bay was a darknet operation from 2014 to 17, and they were the largest darknet marketplace at the time of seizure. And on the website, it recommended to his customers they use a Bitcoin Tumblr service to erase any trace of their coins coming from Alpha Bay, and then provided an embedded link to the Tora website for Graham's Helix. And, uh, show, uh, yeah. And so, a FBI employee acting undercover capacity from a location in DC transferred 0.16 Bitcoin from Alpha Bay Bitcoin wallet to Helix. Helix then exchanged a Bitcoin for an equivalent amount of Bitcoin, 2.5% fee, important, which was not directly traceable to Alpha Alpha Bay. And so, yeah, they they make 311 million dollars <laughs> worth of Bitcoin. And uh, so, it goes through here, and it says how he was. Um, in contact with the Alpha Bay um, admi administrator, and so they were like working closely together, and uh, yeah. So here's here's count one. Yep, administrator Alpha Bay and other persons don't to the grand jury to violate some some laws here. You can't you can't do that, guy. You can't do that. It was a goal of the conspiracy for Harmon and other cool conspirators to unlawfully enrich themselves by offering a Bitcoin money laundering service. And so, uh, good job, good job. And so this is, so, so he has like four different companies. Uh, Drop it is one of them, which is I thought I had it pulled up, but they they call it the Venmo for Bitcoin. And uh, let's look here, real quick. Drop it by Coin Ninja. So Coin Ninja is a website that offers services. Man, where did all these? 
The cheapest way to send and receive Bitcoin. Drop it is like the Venmo for Bitcoin. Send Bitcoin to any of your followers and friends by simply using the Twitter handle or phone number. So you send it, but then they would have to also sign up to drop it, which is custodial. And uh, I mean, that that's fine. Like, that's fine. Whatever. But uh, so this, this is Coin Ninja. This is all owned by Larry. And uh, Coin Ninja does. Uh, I mean, I don't really understand like how they made money. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. Like they have a lightning decoder. You can manually broadcast a transaction. Just like tools. Uh, you can decode BIP 70s. Uh, there's a mobile wallet. So maybe they just make it through advertising on their mobile wallet, which is drop it, I suppose. And so. Uh, New technology. New technology. Wow. Text or tweet Bitcoin directly to friends or followers. Custodial Lightning Wallet. So, uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, man, I, I just remembered this. That reminded me of something. Uh, hopefully, I can find it real quick. Uh, but it was it was a tweet by the Drop It guys uh, for the Bitcoin Pizza Day, and they made fun of Roger because you know that's a cool thing to do when you're a maximalist. When you're a maximalist, it's the cool thing to do. Okay. So, uh, nah, 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 nah. so this is one. So Peter McCormack uh, used Drop It as one of his advertisers, and so, um, oh, you should see how many tabs. Look at how many tabs I got up, and of course I didn't have the right ones up. And so here's what he said about the situation. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. First, we're going to do scrolling simulator. Okay, here we go. So, Larry Harmon has been arrested and is currently in a federal jail. He faces up to 30 years. And so, according to Larry's brother, source of funds is central to his arrest. Yeah, that's where he got into this. So, da, da, da. he was denied bond, considered a flight risk, even though he confiscated. So, <laughs> this is funny. Coin Ninja, so basically the, the umbrella, had assets have been frozen and... Larry's brother believes that the FBI has removed four thousand dollars of Bitcoin from their Lightning node. Oh no, not my Lightning node! How dare you touch my Lightning node? <laughs> and uh, so Larry's brother and the developers are using their own money and time to keep uh, Drop It running. And so federal prosecutors are seeking millions of dollars in financial pen penalties and his properties. And so Peter O oh, then says, "I'm going to pause all advertisements on Drop It." Yada yada yada. And so, yeah, that's, uh, the point is, if you're, like, if you're doing silly, illegal things, like, don't, why are you advertising it? Like, don't advertise it. Like, people know who you are. Like, don't say, send your dirty coins. People know what dirty means. That means illegal. Like, <laughs> it's so silly. I don't, I don't know. It just, just don't make too much sense. Oh, here's the XRP we talked about earlier. Uh, and so yeah, this is the candle. It went from 34 cents to 14 cents in one candle. So <laughs> I have to scroll down and see. This guy says, "What the fuck? Fuck you, Bitmax. This is really not okay. My stop didn't trigger, and my entire Bitmax is gone. Fuck you. That's a lot of fucks. You lost a lot of money. Don't over leverage yourself. Don't trade leverage. That's a lesson." Actually, I think the real lesson is don't long ripple. That's the real lesson out of all of this. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, here's some other. So you can buy Bitcoin with Apple Pay and Google Pay with Drop It. So I guess that's kind of cool. I mean, it's custodial. So, it, I mean, it's only for small amounts, obviously. Uh, it's kind of like Cash App. Speaking of Cash App, I just received a text today. Because I sold $45 of Bitcoin on Cash App. And I received a 1099 some letter form today in a text message um, for my for my proceeds from Cash App. So thanks, Jack. Appreciate it. Got to report my, my $45 of gains. And it's funny because, like, I think I just, like, who knows? I forget where the source of the BTC came from, but I call it proceeds. And, like, it should be, like, profit and loss. Like, how do you know my... My entry price for this BTC, they just like gave me like, oh, here you go, you made forty-five dollars, bastards, bastards, Jack. But I guess uh, if you want to be over-compliant, it's probably better than advertising to mix your dirty coins together. So, uh, uh, here's some uh, Maxi saying dumb things. 
uh, somehow, okay, <laughs> this one's hilarious. So, in 2019, Visa processed $138 billion through their network. Bitcoin processed 700, $727 billion. Asterisk, asterisk. Asterisk, asterisk. Estimated, estimated investor movements ignore circular payments between wallets and multi-hops, may contain exchange cold wallet movements to new wallets. Data via coin metrics estimated on-chain volume. Like... If you have a statement and your asterisk is longer than the statement, I think you uh, probably should like uh, reconsider your original statement. Maybe, maybe it's not fully honest if you have to put a disclaimer that's longer than the statement. <laughs> uh, so, order it's orders of magnitude often logically stupid enough that a dozen French <laughs> urge instant deletions. What a cult! Yes, what a cult indeed. What's up, Jose? Welcome, bro. Welcome, bro. And, uh, this is <laughs> nothing. Where's my other maxi stuff? No way I deleted I had a couple other maxi things. Oh, my. I had, like, three other maxi people. Oh, yeah, this one. So, uh, the blockchain team, blockchain.info, uh, they bought pizza with Bitcoin Cash. And look, they're having a happy time. Uh, yeah, we just bought... We bought stuff with Bitcoin Cash. Woohoo! And then you get to the comments. And then. What? Is that a joke? Is that a joke, bro? Are you seriously using Bitcoin Cash? Is that a joke? And uh, you might wonder who this guy is. I make a point of using and holding all the cryptos we have in our wallet. And that's funny, apparently. And so, uh, who is this guy? Well, he's a co founder of Chainco Labs. So uh, he's direct ties to Bitcoin Core development. So uh, this guy actually helped develop the fee estima esti estimation, the fee estimation algorithms for some wallets, and that's like groundbreaking because you know uh, you have to estimate your fee on BTC. So that's really what a joke. Is that a joke? Is that a joke? Seriously? Is that a joke? So. <laughs> It's anything to make fun of Bitcoin Cash, right? Anything to make fun of Bitcoin Cash. So, uh, yeah. Hey, Jose. I think this is in... So, uh, yeah. He, he So, Peter went to Venezuela. We could talk about that a little bit. And then, so he says, Venezuela is not the crypto use case you've been told. Nobody gives a shit about censorship-resistant money. People want to eat. Eat BCH? They want dollars. BTC store value for select few. Medium of exchange is a myth push with incentives. Dash B shit. Ooh, that's a new one. B shit. Wow, that's a new one. Ignore shitcoin propaganda in Venezuela. So, uh, eat BCH is apparently shitcoin propaganda because, you know, because Peter talked to some guy. Majority of population is poor. They will take any free money. Pedro shitcoin sats. They will convert them to dollars ASAP. Bitcoin and shitcoins are a ter terrible medium of exchange here for so many reasons. The real volume is trading and miners. <laughs> McCormick discovers that <laughs> cryptocurrency, a product in the world, is also a niche a niche product in the world is also a niche product in Venezuela. <laughs> there you go. That's funny. So yeah, obviously like Yeah, I mean not everybody's using Bitcoin in Venezuela. Like obviously it's useful to people there, like it's useful to people all over the world, but it doesn't mean that people that say people are using Bitcoin Cash in a country are wrong because not everybody in the country is using Bitcoin Cash. Of course, there's niche use cases. It's it's silly. Dash B shit. I wonder what the incentives are for B shit. I mean, nobody really pays people to promote B, B shit in Venezuela. They're doing Dash though, so. Um, <laughs> it's so silly, man. Anything to... What is going on with this fucking thread right now? Uh, that has Venezuela done. Nothing like visiting the country to cut through the bullshit on Twitter. Some of the pro-Maduro takes you insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Socialism wreck the country. Not any stupid conspiracies. So, uh... So, yeah. Um... I think that, that'll kind of be it for today. Uh, it was kind of a variety show for today. Uh... It wasn't too meaty. I mean... Like I, like I said, uh... If you're gonna do illegal things, don't say you're doing illegal things. 
Uh, I think that's the big takeaway. I think they are trying to make an example out of Larry for this. Um, because... Yeah, I mean, so so expanding on this, we're not we're not done quite yet. Uh, so, coin mixing services like Helix are a central entity, right? And uh, when you have services such as Cash Shuffle, and Helix does take a cut, so it's a it's a it's a finance it's a money transmitter, right? They transmit money, they take a cut. Uh, with things like Coin Cash Shuffle on Bitcoin Cash. Uh, there are servers, but these servers don't take a cut at all. The servers are just for matching. And so really, you could run a server virtually and uh, anonymously, right? You don't even have to host a website. You just have to host a cash shuffle server. And so um, with something like on-chain coin joining with a matching service, there's no central authority. There's A new server can pop up at any time. Uh, with the Wasabi wallet, you could probably find those... That is like a central matching service, but they actually don't take a fee either. It's just a mining fee. But yeah, basically, uh, I actually have used a mixer before, like back in the day. And uh, it was really fucking expensive. But um, you don't need to anymore with Cash Shuffle and Coin Shuffle. So uh, yeah, use Cash Shuffle and Cash Fusion because uh, nobody likes to custodially, custodially mix your funds. You never know how much you're going to get out, right? You never know what you're going to get out. So... Uh, yeah, it's today Thursday. I'm gonna be back next Tuesday. So hopefully, I mean, hopefully not. Hopefully the drama stays chill. But um, yeah, it's it's Bitcoin Cash. There's always drama. There's always drama in Bitcoin Cash. We we are a coin made out of drama. Like that, <laughs> I don't think you could have a show. I mean, th this show wasn't super much about super much about Bitcoin Cash. It was about uh BTC mixer, but. I think a lot of the most of my topics are Bitcoin Cash. I don't think you could find really a coin that has the amount of the drama and attention uh, that Bitcoin Cash gets, all the developer infighting. Uh, I don't think that's really out there. I mean, B again, BTC is kind of like, I mean, it's the biggest, so obviously there's so much going on. But yeah, with this new, infra the IFP is what it's been called, the Infrastructure Funding Protocol. Proposal, sorry. Uh, the drama is just... Just starting up, man. It's it's gonna be fucking insane. <laughs> I, all I know is I'm doing a live stream that day, and uh, God, there's probably gonna be a fork. Right? I mean, there's this thread. Let me pull it up here. It's um, it's from a BU member, uh, basically talking about um, it's like defending what Bitcoin Unlimited has done. Um, it's it's called providing some clarity in Bitcoin Unlimited's financial decision. Here, let me pull it up here. Uh, for some reason, like, the actual text doesn't load in my browser, so give me one sec. Well, there's a new comment in here. Let's see, what do we got? Let's get some drama, huh? 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 Let's get some drama. Okay. Because that's why we're really in Bitcoin, is for drama. Because, <laughs> you know, we don't watch reality shows. No, those suck, man. We don't, we don't watch those stupid Kardashian shows. We like to watch nerds fighting. Nerds throwing shit at each other. That's way more fun than girls throwing shit at each other. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and so, uh, oh man. So this is basically, BU was founded in 2015 in response to the block size debate. They received a large un anonymous donation in BTC in 2016 from supporters of the so-called on-chain scaling movement. And then the fork happened and they had more BTC than BCH or USD equivalent wise because that's how it goes. And they never really sold their BTC, and so now they hold more BTC than uh, BCH. <clears throat> and this is kind of silly. They they basically justify it by saying BTC has less price volatility. And so they give this chart, which is like... It's supposed to show that there's less price volatility. Man, why can't you see my mouse anymore? It's so strange. The top chart is BTC, bottom is BCH. And I don't know, man. The the chart looks pretty, pretty similar to me. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's a, a pretty good thing. So and then they complain about how BU has no, no say in the protocol of a of BCH because ABC basically holds all the mining nodes and the power and the decision for what goes into the forks. And yeah, and then they say ABC shit talks BU all the time. 
Um, their voting records show b members of Bitcoin ABC voting for a purchase of BSV coin, which is just a troll. Voting for an unfeasibly large block size, probably a troll. I mean, like, Omri just kind of trolled the voting system, and then, I mean, he quit a couple months later, BU, because it's just a shit show. And then this is really strange. Game three, the strategy of betting against yourself. A counterintuitive strategy where you bet against yourself can provide a beneficial lowest profile. If you lose, you win, and if you win, you win. With the current assets holding a BCH and BTC, the organization is financially hedged in a way that if it wins, BC BCH wins, and if BTC wins, then BU lives to fight another day. <coughs> and no, sorry guys, that don't work. And uh... Through its financial strategy, BU has been able to maintain its independence and financial stability. Yeah. I don't know. It's a lot of fluff. And so, uh, um, this is actually pretty new. With the sudden influx of pro-BU propaganda, despite continued... This is from Hayden Otto. It's worth pointing out they recently voted to wreck 60k USD a year to clean up and manage the pure optics. It seems they've hired Paul Wassensteiner from the failed Bitcoin Cash Association to run this operation smear Bitcoin ABC, who did through they both hate. And so, yes, I have seen this. And so this is Paul proposing it. Right now it's just 30k over a six month period. And so it's assumed he's running this new account. And uh, this was also a great response from Shama Chancellor, who, um, man, it's tough, man, because I don't really support this, um, the mining plan, but um, all the ABC people do, um, and Shama does as well, but, um, <sighs> It's coming to like a dichotomy now. It's BU. I mean, it seems like ABC versus everybody else at this point, which is which is sad. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I'll send him man. I'm crying. It's so sad. And uh, he's basically saying that no, BU does do work. Basically, ABC does include other people's work that isn't just. Um, ABC, like uh, Andrew Stone was invited to review and participate in Op CDS. He refused to participate. Uh, Mark Lunderberg get his proposal in. Uh, and Chain get multiple proposals in when they were still around. Tobias Struck just in a proposal. And so that's not true. But you just can be dismissed as they make no technical sense. Extensible script doesn't make any sense. This is past my technical level, but... It's one of those things where like these these nerds can shit talk and everybody's just like yeah hey, yeah that makes sense we don't fucking know it's just <laughs> we don't know so it's yeah it's it's strange so second me so yeah um I don't know man a lot of shit talking going around so um it's only gonna get more and more and this is why I am now a Bitcoin Verde maximalist as you can tell by this new meme that I just made. So, that's my new meme. Oh, I gotta get out of the way. That's my new meme. New meme. New special meme. Go Bitcoin Verde. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, stay vigilant out there, boys. And gal. Probably one gal. I don't know. Maybe. It is crypto, so. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Uh, see you all on Tuesday. See you on Tuesday. Bye now.